Good morning, good morning. Uh, for those that have just joined, I am ready to go. Just hoping and waiting to see if we can get to 40 people and then we can start, but it's already 9.33. So I guess we are good to go. And luckily I'm streaming this live on Facebook as well. So people can then catch up later, but I think just as a backup, I will also have a recording for myself. So I guess uh, we can get started. And I think maybe before we officially begin the presentation, um, the way that I have structured um, today's session is as follows. I'll simply go through uh, a PowerPoint and then I'll be going back and forth, either maybe an Excel spreadsheet and the Bank of Zambia website, because that's where we are going to pick up most of our data. And then I'll be pausing and then asking to find out if I have everyone's attention and if people have understood everything I've explained up until that point. But then if there is something that um, I have mentioned that you are not quite getting, please use the raise your hand feature in Zoom so that I can see your hand. And then you'll be allowed to unmute your mic and then you can ask your question. And then if I know the answer, I will respond and then we can carry on. Or alternatively, if you have questions as I'm going through the presentation and the session, you can also uh, just simply put them in the comments and then I'll be able to go through at the end and answer them. So um, for today's session, I am basically giving an introduction to government securities, specifically government bonds. So with government securities, we have two main types in Zambia. We have treasury bills and government bonds. I feel like when you understand the internal uh, workings and calculations of government bonds, it is very easy to apply similar concepts to treasury bills. But please note that these are two separate um, investment vehicles. Now, before I start, I would also like to give many disclaimers. So the first one being that this is not financial advice. I am not a licensed financial advisor. So I can't um, tell you, oops. So we now have someone annotating. I think let me disable that. So I'm not a financial, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. So everything that I'm saying here is for educational purposes only. However, I am an investor and I actively invest in this instrument, but this doesn't mean that everything I'm saying here should be considered as financial advice. Secondly, I would advise each and every one of you to do your own research afterwards and validate the things that I'll be saying. So you can do this by either asking uh, people at the bank. So these are probably be your relational managers or um, private uh, banker members or someone from Bank of Zambia to validate and uh, check if what I'll be presenting is correct. And then thirdly, and uh, finally, lastly is whenever you are going to look at investing, my philosophy personally is that you need to look at your finances uh, holistically in the sense that you should have your short-term goals set and you should probably define why you would want to go with such an investment vehicle, but also ensure your foundation of uh, financial foundations are solid in the sense that ensure you have your emergency fund in place or your living expenses, other savings that you want to do things like a car, vacation, or whatever that may be, those things should be set because uh, for my personal experience and recommendation, when you typically go into investment, you are looking to make money in the long term. Think 10, 15, 20 years. We are not investing to make money two months, three months, or even 12 months from now. So when you're thinking of investing, please um, broaden your horizon to 10, 15 to 20 years. And I think as far as the disclaimers are concerned, uh, that is it. So we are going to basically start from the beginning. What is a government bond? 
So the treasury section of our government has got quite a number of um, duties to perform, one of which is to raise money for government expenses. Now, the money from government is raised in two main ways. This is usually through taxes. And in Zambia, usually the ZRA um, uh, branch is responsible for doing that. And the second way government makes money is through issuing bonds. So what will happen is the government will issue out an invitation to say we are trying to raise money in order to uh, facilitate running of different projects in the country, building of infrastructure. This could be the roads, hospitals, schools, parks, you name it. So this is the reason why the government issues out bonds or needs to raise funds. These two main reasons, either to run projects or to facilitate infrastructure development. So meaning a government bond in the essence is basically a debt-based kind of investment in the sense that you become uh, the lender where you give government your money so that they can do infrastructure development and run projects. And in exchange for giving them your money for a specific period of time, they are going to give you a certain interest at the end of it all. But not only that, with government bonds, you are going to agree on a an agreed interest rate but during that period that you agree upon you also receive some coupons so this is what is being explained in this side so you the government will give you interest at the end of the maturity period of maturity date and you also get a fixed regular payments also known as coupons and because uh, these are fixed and agreed upon these are typically what you refer to as fixed income because these are sure and then when the bond ex, uh, expires, once your two year or three years or 15 years expires, you get your original investment back, including the interest that you agreed upon when you are starting out. Now, briefly, when I was giving the introduction, I said that we have two main types of government securities. We have treasury bills and we have government bonds. The ones that we are discussing today are strictly government bonds. We're not looking at treasury bills. So the way in which these two differ is the following, two main points. They will differ in the length of time. That's typically the turner. Hello. Treasury bills Hello. are going. Yes. Hello. Yes, yes, yes. Who's speaking? Uh, there's someone who wanted to say something. OK. And I'll carry on. Yes, so I was saying treasury bills are the shorter, uh, shorter term investments. This will happen in a year maximum or less. So they can be one month, three months, Hello. six months. Uh, there's someone who keeps uh, talking, but I can't see whose mic is unmuted right now. So just please raise up your hand uh, if you've got something to ask. If I'm not clear about a certain concept or definition, just use the raise, up, uh, the raise hand feature and then I'll be able to allow you to give uh, time to speak. So we have treasury bills less than a year, one month, three months, six months, and a year or nine months. Then we have government bonds which start at two years and then go all the way up until 15 years. Another difference is that with the treasury bills, there are no coupon payments during that period. However, with government bonds, we have biannual coupons, meaning these coupons are paid every six months. And the final thing is that with treasury bills, you can buy them, or these are usually bought at the price less than their first value. So I'm saying first value for now, I'll define most of these terms as we move along. But think of you going to, um let's say a mobile shop and then buy yeah, some for cheaper than it is uh samuel i think i finally caught is it someone that wants to ask a question is everybody able to hear me so i'll pause for now so for if everybody can hear me just give me a thumbs up in the comments or use the thumbs up feature so that i can see that people are able to hear me Okay, I am getting thumbs up, so I am clear. Great. So when you get treasury bills, this is typically, you buy them for less than they are. So that difference between 
uh, how much they are worth and how much you actually get the fees, the interest on your bond, uh, on the treasury bills. And then for bonds, there are three scenarios that might happen. You might buy a bond at less the price than it is worth, the equal amount, or even end up paying more for yeah, it. Uh, Samuel, I'm not sure if Samuel really wants to say something. Because he keeps uh, shouting. Samuel? I check out Mildred. She's raised her hand. Maybe it's her. I don't know. Oh, OK. Mildred, uh, yes, you may go ahead and ask. You have a question? But Samuel also keeps uh, saying hello. Mildred, do you have a question? Mildred, do you have a question? I think she meant to uh, give the thumbs up. So I'll lower her hand for now. So yes, for bonds, I was saying you can buy them less than they are worth equal to the amount that they're worth or even pay more and we shall see how that happens but then again why would we want to purchase government bonds what's the incentive for us uh giving the man uh giving our money to government so we have the following three reasons uh these are low risk investments in the sense that if the government of zambia were to default on this it means there's probably a lot going on with our government so when we refer to bonds these are not international bonds that government borrows from um, other countries. So bonds, government bonds, we are looking at the government borrowing from its own citizens. So the second uh, reason why you would want to purchase a bond is you could easily liquidate this into cash quite easily. And I put quite easily in quotes in the sense that in the, if you want to sell off a bond, there has to be a willing buyer. But then if you look at um, other Hello. investments, uh, this might take quite some time. And then the third reason why you'd want to buy a bond is that you could use this for as collateral for mm -hmm. loans. Now, now having gone through the background, what bonds are and what they are used for, who can, uh, why you would want to use them, what's the difference between the T-bill and a government bond. Now let's look at the requirements for eligibility as well. So I think before I get to carry on, let me just mute everybody. So I'm hoping to not get feedback. So for bonds, there are two main requirements that you need to fulfill. Is one, at the basic uh, point, you are going to need a bank account that has quacha as the domination currency. So this can be facilitated by any of the banks that we have in Zambia. And the second thing is you need to open up what is referred to as a CSD account, which is simply a central securities deposit account with the Bank of Zambia. Now from here, I have also highlighted some steps to follow. If you go through these steps, typically you should be able to buy your first bond. So the first thing that you are going to do before buying anything is go ahead and research, read information. So in terms of research, this is part of it, which, is, which ties into point number one. Read the government securities FAQ document. This document answers a whole lot of questions and I'll show it in a moment. Then the second step is after you've read through this document and I'll show you where to find this on Bank of Zambia, is that you're going to open up a CSD account with Bank of Zambia. Now for the opening up of the CSD account this week, I learned that not all banks facilitate opening up of this account. It is a very basic, basic form. However, you, the person who needs to take it to Bank of Zambia to actually open it up. Now, if you are like me, who doesn't live uh, in Lusaka, you would typically go through a bank. So that's one option. So as Thank of recording, so as of recording, um, the banks that I'm aware of that facilitate opening up Thank the CSP account. Three, one, two, three. I think uh, Victor, for now, I'll, 
Victor seems to be testing some mic. Um, one, two, three, four, your hand is, is up. Do you have a question? One, two, three, four, do you have a question? Okay, seems the hand has gone down. So I was saying as of today, there are only three banks that I know that facilitate opening up the bank account because not all of us live in Lusaka. <coughs> so I know Zanako does opening up uh, the CSD account on behalf of clients. I know Atlas Mara does this as well. And I also know, um, I believe APSA does this on behalf of clients. Now, for step number two, you have to be very careful if you're going to go through a bank to So just hold on, I keep getting feedback from everyone. And I'll, for now, I will uh, disable people from unmuting their mics and then I'll enable it in a moment. So if you've got a question, just raise up your hand so that I allow it. I think this mic test in one, two is distracting. So I'm hoping no one is now going to disturb this. So I was saying, for the opening up of the account, please be wary that there are charges involved. Zanako, APSA, Atlas Mara are the banks that I currently personally know who facilitate doing this. So when you go to these respective banks, please ask how much they charge because these will be different. All these banks, there is no standardized fee on how much they should charge you for this. So just be wary of the charge. So for example, I bank through, or I did my first bond through Zanako. So I know that there will be a 1% fee on my maturity interest, plus what they call customer walk-in service, which is approximately 115 quarter. So probably that should give you a gauge. You shouldn't spend in my opinion, more than 300 kwacha to open up a CSD account. However, the forms are on Bank of Zambia. You can do it yourself. And if someone knows contact details from someone at Bank of Zambia, whom you can email this form to, please let us know. But that is another alternative. So you've opened up your CSD account. You've read the, frequent, uh, the FAQ document and you've done other research. The next step is to meet the minimum requirement in terms of money. In order for you to participate in either government bonds or treasury bills, you need 1,000 kwacha. So you're going to come up with the 1,000 kwacha or more in order to participate in your first bond or treasury bill. Then step number four is you're going to go back to the Bank of Zambia website to see what is uh, what they call the issuance uh, calendar. So this is where Bank of Zambia gives a predefined calendar of the dates when they are scheduled to hold auctions for either treasury bills and government bonds. So I think for now, this is probably where I will quickly go to the Bank of Zambia website so that I show you where you are going to find this data. So we are currently on Bank of Zambia. Your first point of entry is to your left most where we have bonds and TBUs. A long time, this menu was hidden underneath one of these, but now, oops.
Um, sorry about that. So I lost connection for a bit. I'm hoping people are still with me and we can carry on. Okay, I think uh, the stream is probably also still going on. So we can continue. So yes, I was saying when you get to the Bank of Zambia website, you just go directly to your far left and you're going to click uh, the bonds and T-bills section. Okay. People are very interesting sometimes. So under the bonds and T-bills section, so we are looking at the issuance calendar. So when you click this link here to your left, it will present you the issuance calendar for the year. Now, the way Bank of Zambia publishes this is every single quarter, it will publish that uh, list. So if you go in January, most likely next year, you are only going to see the 2022 first quarter uh, calendar. And then once that quarter is done, the second and then the third and then the fourth. So we're currently in 2021 and of course the fourth quarter. So you simply click that and you download the PDF that comes. And this will give you the dates when government bonds are then going to be issued. So now based on the calendar, you can now start doing your planning. So for so you have a section that gives you the dates for the treasury bill auctions. So these are held every, uh, two weeks in the month. So every Thursday of the month, two Thursdays in the month, you are going to see the treasury bills, but you simply go down to the section that says government bond auction calendar for the fourth quarter. So we are currently in November. So November 26th is when we are going to have the next auction for bonds. So not that bonds are held once a month, treasury bills are held twice a month. And you simply look at the dates by going to the Bank of Zambia, and looking at the calendar. So if you won't be able to get your documents ready by 26th, then you can participate in December on the 24th. And then if you won't manage the 24th, you are then going to see the calendar for January. So that is where you are going to find that document. So simply go to the Bank of Zambia website and then uh, look at the calendar. So that is step number four. Then. Step number five is read the current month uh, tender invitation letter. So what the Bank of Zambia does is before the bid date, so in this case, 26th, uh, it will release uh, an invitation to call out um, to its citizens or pro uh, prospect investors to say, we are going to have bonds on the 26th of November. This is how much we are trying to fundraise. And then each uh, tenor is also going to be stipulated. So again, Bank of Zambia website, you're still going to go through the same menu. And then this time, you are going to go to the bonds section here. So there's a small arrow that you need to click. So in the bond section, you're going to see bond tender invitations by year. So once you get the calendar down, then you're going to look at the invitation. So you simply click the link, and you are going to see all the past invitations up until 2014. In this case, we are looking at invitations for 2021 and we want the invitation for November. So they haven't even released the invitation for December. So as the, as the days uh, draw closer to 24th December, that is when you are going to find that invitation letter. So you simply download that document as well. Now, this invitation letter, has got quite a bit of important information that you are going to find. So it will tell you that the Bank of Zambia on behalf uh, of government of Republic of Zambia inv invites applicants for the bond auction and it will give you the auction number, which is 1121BA, 11 being November. All applicants, whether you are doing competitive or non-competitive bonds should be submitted through the Central Securities Deposit Depository system by 
11.30 hours on Friday, then 26th November, and then settlement will be the following Monday, which is 29th. What this means is that when you have opened up your CSD account at step number two, and you have met the minimum requirements of 1,000 or more, you should then submit your bid to the bank if the bank is representing you to go to Bank of Zambia on the auction date to participate in the auction to buy a bond. So that means everything should probably be in by Thursday, a day before is an ideal. If you can do it even sooner, that is fine. And then I'll explain how you actually submit your auction bid. So we have non benchmark bonds and benchmark bonds. If you ask me right now what this means, I won't be able to tell you. However, what this tells me already is the turner, which is the period we have two years, seven and 15, which are the non benchmark bonds, and then the benchmark bonds, three, five and 10 years. Right now, I don't know what the difference is. This is why I'm saying, please go and do your own research and validate. And then afterwards you have the coupon rate. Now we have a coupon rate of nine for two, 12 for seven, 14 for 15, 10 for three years, 11 for five, and then 13 for 10 years. These coupon rates typically don't change. And you are then going to see how much is up for grabs for the tender amounts. The government is trying to raise 160, 6.5 million under competitive and then non-competitive is they're only trying to raise 18.5 million. So what this simply means is for the two year bond, they're trying to raise 185 million. So meaning they are going to get your one pin. If someone is bidding 10,000, someone else might have 100,000, someone might have 2 million, someone might have 350, someone might have 55,000. All that amount for that specific turner is going to be collected and the total amount should amount to 150 if the government can fundraise that much. Then you are given the SSN number and maturity dates and even a description whether it is an, a new issue or it is a reissue. And then we have other terms and conditions that you need to also go through. So uh, I think one of the most important ones that I will touch on is number three, the minimum value of each application will be 1000 kwacha for off tender and 500,000 kwacha for competitive bids. So if you've got 500,000 kwacha, this simply means you can try and uh, determine how much yield or interest that you would want at the end versus if you've got less, but really at this point, even after the increase, this used to be 30,000 after the increase. I'm not sure about the implications, but everything still works fine. It really doesn't matter. There's probably some economic explanation for this, but I can't tell you that right now. I don't know. Then for, I think another point that I'll touch on, which I'll also highlight in the slides is number four. All tenders must be multiples of 1,000 for non-competitive bids and 5,000 for competitive bids. Now, this was easy to calculate, especially when the limit was 30,000 kwacha, but I think they are still going through, they still follow the same standards, even if competitive bids have now gone up to 500,000. So interest payments are given on this basis and then so on and so on and so on. So this is what you, are going to pick out from the invitation letter. Mostly what you are going to look for is the deadline. For the invitation letter, what I recommend that you look out for is when do you need to have your bid done in the system before the auction? That is my advice. Ensure that your bid goes through before the auction. Then once you have gone through step number five, which is reading the invitation letter, you are then going to submit, submit your bid before the auction. Now, I personally do this through the bank, but if you know what you are doing, you can simply go to Bank of Zambia yourself to submit your bid and then go to the auction and then auction for your own rates. Now, I'm not a professional at this, so I simply go through the bank and the what I pay the bank is that 1% of my maturity um, interest. So please speak to your bank if you want to get this done 
through the bank. Now, what your auction, what your bid offer should look like is as follows. And the great thing is there is data for that as well on the Bank of Zambia website. So once my mouse unfreezes. It should be able to. Okay, it doesn't want to unfreeze. So now, what do you write in your actual bid? So we are going to simply go to download forms this time. This is where you are going to find what you need to put inside your bid offer. So we have GRZ bond application forms and the CSD application form actually is here. So if you scroll down, you're going to see a section that says CSD application forms individual. I know FNB doesn't facilitate opening up of the CSD account. So they will just simply give you the same form. So just to save yourself the trouble, this is where you are going to find the form. Uh, yes, Seva, let me allow you to unmute. You think you should be able to unmute yourself you can go ahead. Seva? Okay, I think she might have typed it. So this is where you find the CSD application form. And this is where you find your bids. So let's say you wanted to uh, bid for a two-year bond. So I would simply download that one and then fill in the form as it is stipulated. So you are going to fill in the form in accordance with the invitation tender dated to this, this, and this. I wish to uh, submit amount of this amount at maturity rate of this, 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 and so on and so forth. So this is what you submit. But for me, who, since I do this through the bank, it is simply a simple letter where I say that, please deduct 10,000 for my account for a two year bond. The calculations I know beforehand and I know what to expect. So the bank will go ahead, but someone at the bank should be able to advise. But the important things that you need are going to be the amount that you want to um, deduct from your account in terms of how much do you want to bid? And then two, stating the period that you want. I think these two things are enough in order to facilitate a valid bid because that's all I've submitted in the past and both times my bonds have gone through. Now, I think I will take a moment before I go to step number seven and eight. Let me just to give feedback. Okay, so I think uh, Seva needs to be unmuted. She still has a question. So while I am unmuting, um, just by feedback. So Seva, I think you should be able to unmute your mic and us now. Just by show of feedback, are we together? So just give me some thumbs up. Anyone I have lost so far, I'll go back in the chat for the comments later. So just give me thumbs up so that I know we are together. Seva, if your question, if you still have a question, please go ahead and ask. You should be able to unmute yourself. Okay, so we haven't yet even gotten to the fun part yet. So I just trying to go as slow as I can so that once we get to the mathematics, uh, we are all together. So step number seven. Step number seven is once you have submitted your bid, you have the money, which is step number eight. The money is in the account. Let's say you want to uh, buy bonds worth 10,000 kwacha. You have saved up the 10,000 kwacha, the money is in your account. You have opened up your CSD, your account has been opened. And by the way, when you open up a CSD account, make sure you have feedback that it's actually been open. So if you're going to go through the bank, please request that they tell you if opening of the account has been done before the auction. Because what happened for the first time was, I thought I opened it and I was ready to buy bonds in August, but the person who was uh, supposed to make follow-ups went on leave and did not submit the documents. So by the time I was submitting my bid, Bank of Zambia re, uh, rejected that to say, you haven't opened up a CSD account. So when you open up 
and fill in the CSD form, make sure your bank gets back to you or whoever. Bank of Zambia should probably write you an email to say your account has been successfully opened. Now, step number seven. This is where you are going to find all the data that you need. This is pretty much the documents that I look at all the time. So this would be your bond tender results. Now, the way bonds work is that at the time you are submitting your bid, you do not know what the rates will be beforehand. So that's probably where the risk lies. That's risk number one. You do not know whether the, the interest rates or the yields are going to go up and down. But you can kind of make educated guesses. And by educated, I'm putting this in inverted commas, by reviewing previous tender results to make adjustments to your investment plan. So now that is where we are now going to actually see these results. So on the website again, we are going back to the bonds and tibules section, and then we are going to collapse the small arrow. This time we are not looking at invitations. We are now looking at tender results by year. So now this is where you are going to try and guess. So 2021 is what we are looking for. And as you can see, you do not have 1121 here. This will only be available after the auction has gone through. So you can't know at that time. And that's why it is an auction. So you have to bid. It's literally like the way you see things in the movie. This item going once, going once for this price. Anyone who wants to bid higher. I mean, in my head, I've never been to an auction before, but that's what I visualize an auction as. So you are going to download the previous months. And if you want, you probably need to go through all of them just to get a sense of how they have moved. But since I have already done this, I, will, I already know that from January to about June and July, the rates were very, very high. And the moment we had our elections, everything seems to have just gone down south. So an, a very uneducated financial um, deviation is that now we have this investor confidence. So there's a lot of supply for government bonds, meaning we have more people going to the auctions with more money. So the rates now have gone down. So you're just going to download the last one. I already believe I have that one. So I want to download that one again. So that's the issue ones. This is 2020. Nope. So where is that one? I know I have it somewhere. So yes, this is it. So this is what results look like. These are the bond tender results after the auction happens. Now, looking at this document, there are a few things that are important, but the most important column here is the following. This column that says cut off bid price. This is the most important column. And I think I'll get back to this sheet in a moment, but let's move on for now. I'll explain why the bid price is important. Now let's start with a little bit of a background. What happened? when I first did my first bond. So I first invested in bonds last year in September. And what I did was I simply went to the Bank of website and at the, on the homepage, there's a section that gives you the rates for government bonds and the coupons. So this is what you're seeing. So this is just a screenshot of the last bond result. So I can already see that for the two year bond, we had a yield of 19.95 with a coupon of nine. In September last year, did not even know what a coupon was and what yield was. For three years, 20, and five years, 23. And in my head, because I had done fixed deposit account, uh, fixed deposits before, I already knew that these rates were great. And by the way, the time I was doing my bond, the yield was at 32.7 uh, to about 33%. In my head, I already thought, wow, an interest rate of 33%. If I put in my 100,000 quach, I'm going to get 33,000 quach. So what I did was using the normal calculation for how we calculate interest. So interest is usually calculated as follows. You get the principal times the rate as a percentage. So meaning you divide that by 100, 
the turner uh, or the period, and this will be in terms of days. So whether it is 182, 90 days, 30 days, 364, five days, that's the turner. And then this is how I did my calculations. I was like, oh, great. My principal is 100,000 kwacha. My rate is 32.7. That was the yield back then. And I want to do the bond for three years. So what this means is if I do this calculation, I am going to get 32,700 kwacha per year. And then I was like, great. Afterwards, I am now going to multiply each year by three years because you know what? Interest is calculated annually. So obviously they have to multiply by three years because it's three years, eh? So I was like, oh, wow. After three years, I am going to make 98,100 kwacha. But that is not how um, bonds are calculated. So basically this is a screenshot showing you the calculations I did in my head. So I was like, okay, 32,700 since it's three years, I'll multiply it by three and then get uh, 98, and then I'll even get my 100 kwacha back. So meaning me, I would have made 198,000 kwacha. That's what I thought. And I was like, oh no, nope, that's not, that's not how the bond actually came out. So when I received my award notice, so what happens is when you go and submit your bid uh, through the bank, they go to the auction, you are going to receive an award notice to confirm that your bid has gone through. This is your award price. This is your face value, or rather this is the amount that we're giving you at the end. And this is the amount of interest you are going to get. They don't tell you the coupons in that letter. But then I was scared because I saw a coupon interest of 10%. I was like confused. I was like, wait, on the website, it was 32.7%. Now how has it reduced all of a sudden to like 10%? because I didn't know what coupons were and I didn't know that you get paid two ways in bonds. You're going to get the discount interest and then you're going to get the coupon interest. So because I thought I had made a big mistake, mind you, so I was like, wait, I have just given the government money for three years and I'm only going to get 10% per year. That's like 10,000 kwacha and I can get more on a fixed deposit because at the time fixed deposit rates were 16 percent i was like wow i have just made the biggest mistake of my life but for some reason i don't know i just held on to it i, I but i almost sold it and then not until i think i found um Chipepo's page uh is it um probably march anyway it was slightly after march after i had received my first coupon so when I learned about bond calculations and what you actually value, then I realized that Jesus, I made an ed educated choice, but it's probably one of the best financial decisions I had made for myself. Now, looking at this table, these were my fake wonderful calculations in terms of returns. So with the investment of 100,000, my fake calculations gave me 99,100. But with the actual bond, with everything included, my actual returns are 107,686 kwacha. Everything with my original 100,000 back. So my question was, where did this 9,586 come extra? So I just simply subtracted this value from this value. So this is what we are now getting into, the actual bond tender results now how you actually come up with your bond amount properly so i will stop for a moment and then just do a bit of stock taking as well thumbs up if we are all together and so on and so forth are we all together? So after I've made my fake calculations, and by the way, do not do the same things for the same rates. Even if you see 19.5, 20.5, those using the simple interest uh, equation is not the way in which you are going to um, calculate your returns. All right, so far, so good.
Uh, so someone has asked the question, can bond reject your bid if they have met their requirements? Yes. So those are the terms and conditions and that frequently uh, the FAQ document that I have said you should go and read, you should go and read. Okay, so I think, um, did I allow chatting? Okay. So yes, they, for those that have joined late, I am recording this. So I'm hoping the stream on Facebook will be also saved. So now let's get back into how to cal actually calculate these returns. And I hope I'll explain this very, very slowly because even though I explain it now, please don't feel discouraged if you don't get um, the essence right off the bat. It's a bit of not really a mind twister, but the more you interact with this material, especially Bank of Zambia, the easier it is to come up with these calculations. And I'll also show you a very, very nifty tool at the end that I use to do this easily now. So going back to the Hello. tender results. Hello, Victoria. Uh, yes, Harrison. Hi, yes. Uh, before we move forward, I just had a quick question uh, about, yeah. the, um, about the returns you showed. You said uh, 107,000 about there. Yes. Uh, yeah, your actual real returns. Is that including the coupon payments or is that just the, the yield? No, 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 no. This is including everything. So these are the coupon payments plus the discount amount. So I'll show okay. you an actual table of how this is actually going to progress. But just to prompt that, this is it. This is how it's progressed. And that's how I came up with the amount. But I'll explain this as we get back, as we get there. So let's start with... Um, the tender results. Any other question? All right. So far, so good. Great. Now let's get to the tender results. And the screenshot you're looking at isn't the current uh, tender results. So these are the results for the auction that I participated in last year. And you can simply tell this because we have the date there. We have uh, 18th September 2020. So you are going to see very high bid prices in this one versus the October one, which has uh, lower ones. So the column that I have highlighted is one of the important ones. So let's um, switch to the PDF version and I'll be annotating that one. So here we have the results for, this is now last month, since 2021. So for the two year turner, so I'll simply go through the columns from the, fr uh, the first column, we have the turner, which is the period. We have the ISN number, we have amount offered at cost. Now you look at this amount, remember we had 185 million, which is the same amount that you're going to find in the invitation letter to say, this is how much money they are trying to fundraise for the two year period, three and so on and so forth. Then we have amount uh, bid face value. This one, this column, I am not so sure how this one works. So I'll skip this one, this one I don't know. Then we move on to, which ones? I also don't really understand how the bid cost comes in. But what I know is this one that says allocated. So meaning this is the amount that was actually allocated at cost or at face value, meaning once your bonds mature, this is how much they are going to give back and this is how much they are allocated. Now, if you look at these totals here, you see 1,765 1, million. It's obviously higher than this amount that they are raising. So for these numbers here at the bottom, I won't lie, me, I'm not going to pretend I know what's going on. Me, I'll just tell you what I know, which is this amount here, the cut off bid price. Now this cut off bid price is what you are going to use when calculating your bonds. Another thing to pay attention to is the cut off yield. So here we have the cut off yield, which Bank of Zambia says that those that bidded, uh, between 13.95 to 19.95 are those successful bids that went through. Because remember, the Bank of Zambia can reject your bids. 
especially if you put outrageous amounts. So if you, you went in and then you said you want a yield of 20%, your bond gets rejected. Now for this specific turner, there wasn't any rejected uh, yields or bids and the coupon rate is 9%. The coupon rates typically never change. From last year, when I looked at the tender results, I have never seen this value change unless otherwise. Now, if you look at the three-year bond section, so let me see if I can annotate this as well. We see that uh, some people were shooting for the stars as it were. So, and you also have to kind of learn how to read the financial climate and what it is that government is willing to pay off. So if you look at this, you can see that some people shot their shots, so to speak, by saying we want a yield of 23%. But you see that only those that were within 14% and 20.9% went through. So you also have to be very careful when going through the auctions. This is why I always personally prefer to go through the bank because the bank typically knows what to do. However, I have bidded for a treasury bill and the bank failed as well. So it's not to say that every time you go through the bank, it will go through. Nope. I have done treasury bills before and it was rejected because I was within the unaccessible yield rates. So if you know what you're doing, you can go, but also know that there is rejection sometimes. Now, another thing to point out is even if someone went ahead and put up a bid for 14% yield, what happens is that even if you bid at the lowest, 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 you are still going to get the highest rate that everyone went through because you are within that range. So even if you put in your bid for 14%, you are going to get a yield of 20.9%. And yield is not the same thing as interest rates. Eh? Yield is not the same thing as interest rates. And of course, the three-year bond has the 10-year coupon and everything else. So as far as and sex range of successful yields, I think um, that is clear. You What you want is to be within that range. So the idea is you're going to bid in the middle and then if someone outbids you and but you're still within that range, you get the higher yield. Now, the bid price, the bid price, the bid price, the bid price. This is your friend here, cut off bid price. So the way I understand this is that you are willing to pay 82 kwacha, for example, for the two-year bond to get 100 kwacha back. In the same way, you are going to pay 78 kwacha to get 100 kwacha back. So the difference is going to be what your interest is. Now, loosely speaking, that's how I understand this, but there's a formula that uh, Chanosia showed us, I think in the last session that you did when are coming up with um, the actual amount. So now I'll go back to the slide so that I can show this. So here's what you are typically going to see as a result of uh, your award notice once your bid goes through. So your so someone wants access. I think there are a few bots in this thing. Eh? So when you get your bid, uh, when your bid goes through, you are going to have obviously the address information, which I've grayed out for privacy and security reasons. You are going to have your SSD account, the auction name, the security name, and the issuance number, the settlement date, meaning when the money is deducted from your account and the maturity date is also given. Now, my focus, I want us to look at what we are seeing down here, this section. So um, this column that says amount is the face value, meaning this is how much money I will uh, get. This is how much I have bought the bond for. But in order for me to get a bond with 165,000 kwacha, I have only paid 98,951 in Gwe. So what this means is the difference now becomes my discounted interest. This is the final interest at the end of the three-year period. And my award price for every 100 kwacha that I'm paying, I am paying 50 
9.9397 quacha. So again, I am buying a bond. It is worth the actual real value of this bond is a hundred and where is my yes, a hundred and sixty-five thousand quacha. This is how much it is worth. But because I am getting it at a discount, there is a discount given on this bond. I am going to buy it for 98,900 kwacha. And if I subtract 100 and if I subtract 98,951 kwacha from 165 kwacha, I will get 66,000 kwacha, 99.49 in way. So meaning this is the interest. Now, if you recall, at the beginning of uh, the presentation, I was saying that when you buy bonds, you're going to have three separate scenarios. Either you buy them less than their value, you can buy them equal to their value, or you might end up paying more. So in this case, I paid less, but please note that sometimes it will be equal to their value or even more than their value. So the question becomes then how do you make the money? That would be via the coupon interest. So you can see from the award notice, there isn't any information regarding the coupon interest. Even I don't know the formula, but I have a worksheet that Chanosia produced that tells you exactly all of this information. Now the bid price that I keep saying is very important is this one that you're seeing there, 59.93 and I will show you a quick way in which you can uh, easily do the calculations. So I'll pause again for now. Do we have any questions? So again, in my previous slide, I said that the actual returns are 107,000 something something, but where is the other money? So I'll show you where that other money is. And it's basically um, the coupons. I think, uh, yes, you can. Uh, Victoria, Victoria? Yes, yes. Yes, you can uh, go what ahead. What happens and... when the government starts printing money like uh, Zimbabwe did? Sorry? When the government starts printing money? What when happens, the government uh, starts to print money? Yeah, the value of the money, the value of money uh, drops. Um, so, for th so for that one, with regards to what happens when uh, the government starts printing money, I can't answer that one. So I'm not a professional financial economist and the like. You know that. You know, so you know. I probably won't give an educated and actual real answer. But if there's someone who knows, please go ahead. Uh, I'm not sure if this is Midas. Your hand is up. Please go ahead and speak. I wanted to find out on the coupons yes uh yes. where where do they come from we are getting there sir oh okay yeah. and uh how much and the, the determinant of that what determines the, the amounts and whatnot uh we are getting there sir no problem so chanosia has just posted i think the answer in the printing of money that can lead to inflation and we saw that um over the course of this uh, past two years where the inflation just shot extremely high and rapidly to all the way, I think up to 26%, probably government was printing money then, but I wouldn't know. But definitely what Chanosia says makes sense. It's that can lead to inflation. We do not want people print, government printing money anyhow. Uh, so coupons, I'll get to that in a moment. I just want to make sure that everyone under, has understood the first point of making money with bonds. The first point of making money with bonds is through buying them at a cheaper amount. Uh, yes, Zondo, your hand was up. Yes, um, the other day I was watching that video from, uh, correct me if I'm pronouncing it right, Liapa, uh, Liapa? <laughs> Liapa, yes. Liapa, yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Uh, there was a gentleman there who talked about the printing of money. And um, the printing of money is one of the reasons why bonds are risk-free invest or low risk in quotation. Oh, because yes. they will print the money to pay you back. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons why the printing of money happens. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, we'll get our money back. Uh, 
or what they what they're going to give us but the money won't be worth as much because there's more of it yeah definitely um so the first point of making or rather the first so part of five thousand if, if we put in ninety eight thousand now give that to the government and we get back one hundred and sixty five thousand in three years that one hundred and sixty five thousand isn't going to be worth what it is worth now it's going to be worth oh. much less because yes. there's more money circulating around so you also have to factor in inflation in your calculations though i haven't so, so you're just better off we're just better off buying ethereum and any cryptocurrency so i haven't given calculations in terms of actual returns after you've accounted for inflation and everything but you need to do that since this is just an introduction and i didn't think we would go that way um there was another hand that was up or is that okay i think that was from the previous question. Now, this is where the other money came from, eh? So over the course of the next three years, now remaining two, because one year has elapsed, this is how the bond will actually actuate. And this is where the money is coming from. So for every bond that you have, it comes with a corresponding coupon. The two-year bond has 9% coupon rates, the three year has 10, the five has 11, and so on and so forth. So they calculate the coupon on the, uh, using the face value, not the, the cost amount, and you'll find out how much you're actually going to get. So for me, these are the actual real numbers. So the first coupon came through in the first six months after the bond uh, was gone through. I received the 6,986. Then the second coupon was, uh, 6,872, and I predict that it's going to be the same. I don't think we have... Okay. I don't predict we have any leap years because the interest, the coupon interest is actually... Oops. I need to mute everybody. Yes, so the coupons are actually counted every single day. And there's a whole formula for this. I have decided not to show it. Calculating the coupons and the actual bond discount amount is a pretty good looking formula, but I, have, I don't know it. I've suggested not to show it, but believe you me, when I say it is a complex formula, it, is, it really is. So this is how, the bond will progress every year. I'm expected to receive 13,859 in the first year. In the second year, I will receive the same amount. But finally, in the final year, I will receive my first coupon, the second coupon, and that discount amount that I mentioned that was on the award notice. And I'll get back the 98,000 as well. So just from the coupons and the discount alone, this is how much I have generated. So just from those, that is how much has been generated. So I'll pause for now, stock taking as usual. We haven't discussed the calculations I know, we are getting there. Any questions? Any questions? Okay, let me, I was just removing someone. They were trying to get control of the PC. So let me clear this. Uh, Tepa, I can't pronounce, I don't want to butcher your first name. So I'll say what you can go ahead and ask. So I'll allow you to unmute yourself. You can go ahead and ask. Okay, thank you. Um, sorry, I joined late, so probably I've missed a couple of definitions um, and maybe some explanations, but then I was looking at the coupons. So mm. my assumption was, 
it's a fixed percentage, right, of yes. whatever yes. investment you've made. So I've noticed the figures differ, the first mm. coupon and the second one. Mm -hmm. Very true. So my understanding is that coupon is calculated, I think, uh, the whole year, but um, we have 365 days. But I think for most of the calculations, they use 364. And was it um, was it last year when we had a leap year or something? I'm honestly, that is just my guess, but this is the money that reached my account. So that's what I have presented, but there's an actual formula and what not not. But it's, I think what you're trying to ask is that they are not equal because it's six months. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Yes, probably yeah. is what you are, you are trying to ask. So for that one, I can't give an educated guess, but all I know is that the calculations, uh, no, I wouldn't even try, but this is how much I received this year for both my coupons in 2021. And I suspect they might be the same for 2022 and 2023. Um, Lenga, your hand is up. You can unmute your mic. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Okay, so I'm a little bit behind. Um, I get the, 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 the amount you are talking initially. Okay, let me just take you back a little bit. You said, um, for example, you deposit in your CSD account, 165. And then you find that the, I don't know if it's face value, uh, it's actually lower than that amount which you deposited, which uh, is a 98, right? Mm, Where okay. does the 66 yeah. go? Okay, so first of all, um, it's a good thing you've asked. When you are doing your bids for your bonds, the money sits in your bank account. So if you are with FNB, Atlas Mara, Access, Standard Chartered, Zanaco, you name it. The money sits in your bank account. And that's why it has to have, the requirements are that you have a Zambian account. I think that is here. You should have a Zambian account or rather an account with Kwacha as the local currency. Then um, when you write that letter at step number, where is that? Step number six, submit your bid before the auction. This is through the bank. You are simply going to write in your letter to say, hello, bank manager. I would like to participate in bonds for two years. Please debit my account number 72113 with, in my case, I had 100,000. So that's all I wrote. Now, I didn't know that what I would end up getting was a bond valued worth 165 because that is only determined at the auction based on the bid price, which is in this case, the award price. So you can't guess that I will get 165. Maybe depending on the bid price, it would have actually been 160. Or if I was lucky, it could even have been 195 based on the award price, because the lower the award price, the higher the bond that you can buy, meaning the higher the discount you are going to get. So I'm hoping that's, so the CSD account, and I put this as notes at the end, isn't a place like where you can log in on Bank of Zambia, where you will give you your credentials and then log in to see your bond. Nope, you just see your money disappear from the account. And then every six months you see money coming back in. But what you as the investor are going to say is, I am willing to put up 1,000 kwacha, 2,000 kwacha, 7,000, 10,000, 15,000, 75,000, 112,000 kwacha, 500,000 kwacha. You tell the bank how much you are willing to buy a bond for. Then depending on the bid price, when the auction is going through, that's what would determine what disc, uh, what face value amount will be allocated to you. So that's why I will there's a calculation slide coming up next that will hopefully um, shed more light on this. Um, any other questions, Subi? 
Yes, thank you. Uh, okay, so on the next slide after this one, where you were where you were showing your calculations, you said the two coupons gave you thirteen thousand over mm -hmm. three years plus the discount gave you a hundred and seven thousand kwacha back. Yes. Then after afterwards, you receive the principal back, which is ninety eight thousand, right? Yes. So that's added to the hundred and seven. No, right now it's not, back or? right now the hundred and seven is just the hundred and seven. The hundred and seven is as a result of this thirteen thousand plus this thirteen thousand plus this seventy eight, yeah, seventy nine thousand, which gives you hundred and seven. I haven't added this one there yet. So I wanted to separate it from the returns, and I also haven't added the the fees associated. So there's another slide which I talk about fees. I haven't shown you the fees either yet. So we're also getting to that. All right. And then when we get to the calculations, if you are going to calculate for us, could you also show with, uh, let's say, like for me, who wants to say, okay, I want to start a bond at 2000 kwacha is what I want to invest in. Could you calculate for us what would likely be our yes. outcome? Yes, 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 yes. I'll show you the calculations right. and then I'll even give you a tool. Not give you because it's not free. I will tell you to buy a tool. Not from <laughs> me though. Which everyone, how many are we here? We are currently 78 minus the person who owns the tool should buy it. The person, yes. So we are getting there, sir. So far, at least I'm, I'm hoping that point number one was getting the 66,000. Uh, but I'm also having these six, nine, six, eight, six, nine, six, eight throughout the three years. So in my opinion, this kind of helps. Uh, it's not a financial term, but it kind of gives you uh, some income to look forward to because giving your money away for two, three, five, seven, 10 and 15 years, and then only getting your money back at the end feels like a long time to wait. What if, you know, we have hyperinflation, there's a civil war, all these things that might happen. So I feel like the coupons help cushion that blow of the weight. But I tell you, for at least my case, when I did my bond, the first one, it was worth it. So let's um, go back to the bid price again. The bid price is very, very, very important. Using our current president voice, when he says things are very important, you mean they are, it's real. So I'm giving you a scenario based on the bid price. So here I am saying the following. Looking at the bid price that I got my three-year bond for in September 2020, the bid price for three years was at 59.9397, meaning I needed to pay 98,900 and kwacha to get a 165,000 bond. Now, if I had 100,000 kwacha again last October, this previous auction, this meant that the bid price has now changed. It has now increased to 78.257, meaning to get the exact same bond that I did for 165,000, that was the face value, I would now need to pay. 129,124 kwach to get the exact same deal. The, if someone also had 100,000 kwacha last month and they wanted to buy a three year bond, they most likely paid 192,000 kwacha, 124, meaning their discount reduced from 66. Now it became 35,876 kwacha. So meaning me who invested in 2020, I made 30,000 kwacha more, but 35,000 kwacha is quite a lot of money for doing nothing, by the way. When you do your bonds, it's not like you are holding Zoom meetings, you are not doing advertising, there is nothing. You just let your money work. And this is why I probably, bonds and stocks are probably one of my favorite investment vehicles 
because I don't do anything. The government is running up and down, running projects, doing infrastructure, and doing what they need to do to give me my money. All I needed to do was do the initial work and then come up with the money, give it to them, and then they give me money. So in my opinion, 35,000 is still a pretty good deal if you look at the alternatives of putting it in a fixed deposit account. And this is not even including the fix, uh, the coupons. This 35,000 is not including the coupons because you still get coupons on top of this. So this is going to be 35,000 plus six coupon payments, okay? So this is why I say, when you're looking at that result sheet, look at the bid price. The lower the bid price, the less amount of money you pay. The higher, the more. But looking at other options, bonds currently are still a good investment. I'm not saying you should go and buy bo uh, bonds, please. The disclaimer at the beginning again, ensure all your financial foundations are done. And this is an example I always give. Eh? When you're building a house, you don't start buying and laying the tiles first. You haven't even made the car box. You don't even have walls or a roof and you're buying tiles. So the, when we are going through personal finance, there's, there are things that are kind of agreed upon, but there isn't a real followed step-and-step -step structure that you should go by. But at least the foundations, your emergency fund done, and all the other intermediate expenses that need to be done at least for a year should be covered somehow. So this is why I keep saying the, the bid price, this one, very important. Now here is the formula on how much, uh, on how you can calculate what bond you can buy. This is a formula again, to find out how much you are going to need to buy a specific bond. So this is just, I made, not I made this up, I just created this. So the cost of the bond is going to be equal to the bid price and the first value at maturity. So that 165, whether you want a 200 bond, a 150 bond, a 70,000 bond, that's what you're going to put there. So where the bid price, you're going to divide that by 100 so that it becomes a decimal. And then the first value is what you are hoping to get at the end. So here I have examples. So I'm using uh, the three-year bid price, uh, the three-year bid price from last month's auction. So this is um, October. So let me just verify this. So where is it? So this is definitely October, yes. So we're looking at 78 quacha. I mean, 78.2570. So that's what you see. And yes, so. This is how I um, prefer you interpret this or read this. If you want a 10,000 kwacha bond for three years, based on last year's last month's result, you will need 7,825.7 kwacha in your account. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is, and this happened even the second time I was buying a bond because I forgot this, eh? I told the bank that I want bonds with 10,000 kwacha, but when I got the award notice, I saw that they only deducted 8,000. I was like, wait, what about the other uh, 2,000? Why haven't you taken it? It felt like they were wasting my time and money. But then I forgot that, oh, with bonds, these are calculated as multiples of ones. I think that was for competitive and multiples of five for non-competitive. Now at the time, that 5,000 was at the 30,000 threshold. Now it's at 500,000. So I don't know if the same principle applies. So please know that when you are issuing out your instruction and you say you have 7,000, 10,000, 15,000, that is not the amount that will most likely come out of your account. What um, the people who go to the auction is they will pick the nearest 1,000 bond or the nearest 5,000 bond to buy with the amount you have given them, okay? So me, I had 10,000. I thought I was going to probably get a 12,500 face value bond, but then I forgot, no, they don't do 12,500 kwacha. No, it has to be multiples of 1,000 and multiples of 5,000. So sir, you said, let's say you have a 7,000. What you are going to do is, uh, replace this seven, this 10,000 with 7,000 and multiply it by the bid price 
to find out how much is what you're going to pay. If the amount is like this one, uh, it's 7,800 and you still have that two, 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 you feel like you can go to the next multiple. So I've shown that moving from uh, 5,000, I've moved to 15,000 because it's multiples of 5,000 for now. Then I've said, okay, to get something worth 15,000, I will need 11,000. And if I want a bond worth 20,000, I will need 15,000. And if I want a bond with, if I've got 50,000 kwacha in my account, what I will pay is actually 49, but you still have that 10 kwacha. So what you can try is increase this to 55,000 and multiply and see if it is still below 50,000. And what I mean is this. So where's my calculator? Calculator, calculator. So let's say you have 50,000 that you want to buy and you've targeted the three year bond. And just because, I'm, by the way, this another disclaimer, just because I keep saying three years, it's, it doesn't mean this is the only bond that has got the best returns. No, please, no, 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 this is not the case. I just use three because that's the one that I have. Or oh, I have two, I have two and three, but I just like three. Please, it's not to say it's not, it's the one with the most amount. So let's say I have 50,000 kwacha. So typically you are going to bring out your calculator and say 50,000 times the bid price, which is currently 0 0.78257. And you're like, oh, it's 31,000. I still have like 11,000 left. So let me try 55,000. So you do 55,000. Let's see if I can get that. And let's see if it's still with that uh, range. 0 0.78 again, 257. And yes, 43,000 is still less. So we are still moving. We still have a 7,000 to play with. So you increase that 55 to 60,000. So 60,000, this is the long cut, by the way. I'll show you a very, very easy way. 0 0.78257. And they're like, okay, I think at 60,000, it would have reached. So you can even estimate that with my 50,000 that I'm giving the bank, they will only deduct about 46,952 and my first value is going to be 60,000. Um, I hope that answers your question, sir. With uh, the calculations and you are going to keep doing this now. Luckily, we don't need to do this anymore. We have a tool that has been created. And this is what I was saying to say that the first values of bonds are typically in multiples of 1,000, which I haven't highlighted, and 5,000. So please factor that into your calculations. Now, before I show you the two, uh, some things to pay attention to with bonds. So when you open up your CSD, uh, CSD account via the bank, most banks, and by most banks, I've only said three, they will charge you something to do this on their behalf. Now, if you're in the outskirts, like me, who doesn't live in Lusaka, this cost was 115 kwacha for my bank. And it was a one-time fee, and that was it. Then also note that there's a 15% withholding tax on coupon interest. And this is already deducted by the time it hits your account. So you don't even see it. So that by the time I'm receiving my six nines and six eights, they've already removed uh, what they need to remove. And then if you go through the bank, most banks will charge a 1% handling fee of your discount interest. So that's 66,000, they'll get a 1%. When they get it, uh, I think for my bank, they get it once the auction goes through. So make sure you also account for that amount in your bank account as well. And then the, the fourth thing is there isn't any system that you can log in to see the status of your bond like you would do with internet banking. You just tell the bank via letter, the bank with, uh, takes your auction bid and then Bank of Zambia deduct and every six months, they are going to send the money back to your account because when you're writing the auction, they will ask you which account number do you want to send your coupons to? And you're going to say bank account number one, two, three, four, five. And then when you get the bond, by the way, so let's say you win a bond for two years. If you win it at a 33% yield, thank God it doesn't change. It will continue being 33% until those two years elapse. 
even if the prices for future bonds go down. Now, if you buy at 33% and then the following month, the yield rises to 44%, you don't get that benefit either. So those are other things you should uh, pay attention to. Then last but not least, it is typically, and I put this in inverted commas, one person per bond, they are not shared in the sense that I can't share my bond with my young brother or my mother. And when you, I didn't write this, um, when you get those coupons, eh, you can't top up. There's nothing that, no, I want to top up so that the money now becomes more. Nope. When you get that coupon, you can do whatever you want with it. You can buy things, you can reinvest it, put a fixed deposit, you can do whatever you want with it, but there is no topping up. There's no kajonko, there's nothing. If you want an investment vehicle that does topping up, you are going to look for something else. But with bonds, once you sign those terms and conditions, that's it. 33% is what you go with. That coupon rate doesn't change. The amount doesn't change. But you can also sell the bond before it matures. Now, in order for this to happen, there should be a willing buyer. Now, if you're going to sell the bond before it matures, you are going to forfeit future coupon payments as well as that discount at the end which is where the more money is. So that's why I, I keep saying that ensure your foundations are set. You do not want to pull out money uh, from an investment once it has started running. So you really have to be very, very sure that this money you do not need for the next two, three, seven years or 10 years, depending on which bond uh, you go for. So these are your bond coupon rates. That's the withholding tax of 15%. And you notice that I have left the bid price blank because these are the things that uh, fluctuate. So there, and this is a screenshot from the two that I'm about to show. So this is where you, uh, you enter these prices. And now this is now where I'm going to switch to Excel to show that too. Now, before we, we go any further, um, Let's do a bit of stock taking because I haven't done it. How are we? How are we going? How are we feeling? Are people with me? Is there any questions? 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 Clarifications? Contributions? How are we? Uh, yes, Mulenga, you, do you have something to say? Your mic is unmuted. Also, uh, Chanozia gave an answer for the coupon calculation. Eh? So in the chat, she, uh, she's posted that coupons are calculated on a daily basis from when you get your bond. By estimation, it will almost be equal, but in actuality, they won't be because years have different days. So this is what I was trying to say, that some years have got leap years, others don't. So that's, um, where, you, that's where you find the difference in coupon payments. And then Harrison has, is asking, so for the guy who asked uh, at the October 2021 rate, so your 2,000 kwacha will be a first value of uh, 2,555.68. So yes and no, because it has to be in multiples of 1,000. So it's not, it can't be 2,500. It has to be either a 2,000, a 3,000, a 4,000. So that's what we need to calculate and we shall probably do this using Chipepo's sheet. Uh, yes, uh, Gerland, you can go ahead and ask. Uh, would you just walk me through how to calculate uh, a coupon rate on a 20,000 quarter? <clears throat> no problem, sir. Uh, Zondo, yes. your question. Yes, um, on maturity. The selling your bond, you say, I think it was even in quotation, a buyer that there has to be a buyer ready. Eh? Yes, there has uh, to be a buyer. Is it possible for that buyer to just say, okay, let's say your maturity, I'm just using a random figure, 165,000. Is it possible for the buyer to just say, okay, I'll give you less? Yes, yes. Actually, when you are selling, um, the bond, I think this is done via the secondary market, by the way. So through Luce, um, 
you can decide, but what you are probably going to negotiate is your cost price. So in this example, uh, let's see, this 98,000 for me, I can't negotiate. Uh, can I negotiate the 165? I'm not sure, but I'm sure you can probably negotiate the award price or the cost, but I'm not quite sure. I've never gotten to bonds through the secondary markets yet. And for those that have the Luce app, there is something called clean price, dirty price, something, something or the other. I haven't um, delved into the secondary market via bonds so far, but I know someone who has, and they got a really good deal too. So it's not to say the secondary market is intrinsically bad, but when you go to the secondary market, at least know the basics of things like this so that you go as an informed person where you won't be cheated out of your money or you won't get a bad price. So I'm supposed to switch to Excel, but then who else had their hand up? Um, 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 um. Wait, 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 wait. Where is my... There we go. Uh, Tepa, you have another question? Or is that from the previous time? Okay, I think it's from the previous time. So we are now going to Excel. Okay. Oh, Natalie. Yes, please, please, please. Hi, Victoria. Um, Hello. For banks that do not open the CSD accounts for you, and you have to apply um, via the website for both, how long does it take? Um, when you're opening through the bank, for me, it took less than a week, I think. I put in my letter by Tuesday, Thursday, I was able to get feedback that it has been opened. So I think it really depends on who's doing it at the bank. So that's through the bank. But then if you're going to go like doing it by, on, by yourself, where you have to take it to Bank of Zambia, I don't know if there's an email that they have which receives uh, uh, application letters, but it doesn't take long. So if you are interested you in FNB doesn't open for can't no. open for us, right? No, FNB doesn't. They'll just tell you go to the website and they'll say go to Bank of Zambia, open up the account. And some banks are very, very funny. They'll say become a premium member for you to access. By the way, do not pay any bank for any premium memberships to access bonds. It's not a premium service. The general, it's open to the general public and you don't need to open up a bank account that has a monthly fee of 750,000 in order for you to open up a bank. What a bank is trying to do is sell a product to you so that they get money. A basic account with a monthly fee of 30 kwacha or 50 kwacha or even no fee whatsoever should suffice because the only criteria for the accounts is that it should have kwacha as the currency and denomination. You should not be paying premium uh, fees to a bank. Nope, 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 nope. Please don't. Uh, yes, Tukia. Do you have any questions? Uh, if you are, if you, if you are talking, I'm not sure if your mic is on. You can also. Uh, type in the chat. Oh, did I search people? I'm reading the comments. Yeah, no, I meant Chanozia. People has got nothing to do with the, the shit. So Chanozia has guided to say, if you're going through FNB, speak to the manager, not the desk people. And I think that's probably what uh, the person I was uh, helping out encountered. So go through the bank manager, no premium cost, like I'm saying, you do not need to be a member. So talk to the manager, don't talk to the people at the help desk or even the relational manager, because the person I was talking to asked the relationships manager at FNB and they still didn't know what was going on. So point being, don't pay a lot of money to open up the CST account. It is not a complicated uh, process. It's not that serious. So we have amounts moving through. So now I'll take this opportunity to say that we have a tool, first of its kind in Zambia, that 
takes out all of these calculations out of our hands with a click of a button and pressing a few keys. So what you are now looking at is the investor's companion sheet by Chanosia. Wait, 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 I'm getting some feedback. Okay, I'll mute everyone for now. All right, so yes, uh, you're looking at the investor's companion sheet by Chanosia Kavai. If you are not following her on her social media platforms to Instagram, where she gives financial education information. I don't know what you're doing with your life. She's currently not on Twitter, but she has uh, information on both her Facebook and her Instagram pages. This worksheet that you are looking at is only going for a very, very, very cheap price. In my opinion, you should be charging more for this of 500,000 kwacha and it's a once off payment. And it allows you to dream and speculate as many numbers, amounts as you possibly can. So we had, so what we are looking at is the, the bond tab. So that's what we are focusing on, the bond tabs. But she has, in the same worksheet, she also shows you scenarios where you can simulate and creating investment plans and strategies for unit trusts and stocks treasury bills and fixed deposit and bonds. So these are typically the main investment vehicles that we have in um, Zambia and we are specifically looking at bonds. So this is the worksheet that you have. And right off at the top, so this is not supposed to be a tutorial on how to use this sheet because she has it when you buy it. So we have the turners that we now know, we have the coupon rates and she's also included the 15% withholding tax. And we have a section where we can edit the bond prices, which is essentially the bid price. So these rates that you are seeing are essentially the, uh, the bid prices from October's uh, auction results. And you can edit this and change this as we go. So I'm seeing a lot of comments. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm seeing quite a few comments. Okay, so I think it's people chatting. Did I say 500,000 kwacha? Oops, sorry, yeah, but honestly, it should be 500,000 kwacha. It's actually 500 kwacha. I'm 100 kwacha, yeah, five. But in actual fact, it is probably worth 500,000 kwacha. So please, please um, don't um, butcher me. So she's also, uh, responded to say it in counts for inflation, the fees, the tax, and all those other things. So guys, if you're going to spend 500,000 kwacha on this companionship, me, you can give me the 495,000 and so on and so on. So basically how you're going to use this worksheet is as follows. So you have the bond table, this blue part, let me even zoom in. This blue part is basically where you enter your dream amount. And then what this um, sheet will do is it will calculate the two-year bond over a period of 20 years, and you can add more years to this if you want, if your investment horizon is longer. So you see the calculations being propelled for a three-year bond, the five-year bond, how much you're going to get in coupons, the seven-year and 10 and 15-year. Where is the 15? Eight. Chipepo. I meant Chipepo. Sorry. So I think this should be actually 15. I didn't notice this. This should be 15 MQI. So if I keep saying people, please, I mean Chanozia. <laughs> so we have scenarios. I think someone mentioned if they have a 2000 quarter, how much would they get? So what you are going to see here is the corresponding tables populate. So this will update for all the years. So you see the amounts updating for two years, three years, five, seven, 10, and 15, even the ones down. But you notice that the future value here is not a multiple of one or five. So what this tells me looking at this sheet, having now understood the formula is that I need to keep updating this amount until I get a future value that is a multiple of five or a multiple of one. So maybe if I can try, two, five being deducted somewhere there. 
So yes, so you can play around with this number and reduce it a bit, but this is what we are looking at. So for 2000, the person who asked 2000, you will probably get a lower return. So what will happen is the bank won't deduct 2000, but something lower to match a 2000 coupon. So if I use that 2000 example, let me try 17 to see if we get close to 2000, about 17. So if you tell the bank, I have 2000 quarter, what will actually be deducted would be approximately 1600 and something, something. And this becomes your yearly coupon. So the coupon for this worksheet is counted at uh, yearly. So you divide this by two and divide this by two and you find out what your total gain is by investing 1,600 and something, something. Then someone asked, I believe, was it 20,000? Was it 50,000? Okay, let's go with 20. For 20,000, again, this is not a multiple of 1,000 or 5,000. So I'll increase this to maybe 21,000. Yeah, about maybe 20,900. But the easiest way to do this again, guys, is just use the, the formula so that you know. So even that is too much. But essentially, this worksheet gives you all the information that you need with, with how much you are going to get, the principal, your yearly coupon interest, what you've gained. And the great part is for this worksheet, we are assuming that you are going to compound your uh, gains, meaning you're going to keep your coupons and also the discount interest and reinvest that amount over and over and over again. Now, if you leave at initial 20,900 over a period of 19 or is it 20 years, it will grow to 500,000 kwacha. So, uh, um, I'll pause here. So at this point, I am not going to start asking everyone to give me their prospective amounts. You have the worksheet, it's 500 kwacha. Chanozia has all the information on her social media pages. I am not even getting commission on this, but we cried for this worksheet and begged her to create it because in as much as I know how to calculate all these things, by the time I start calculating the different scenarios for two years, is it three years, five years, 15 years, and so on. I, this is it's not, it's doable, but it's a lot of work. So we asked Chano, Chano to just create this. And I think this was as a result of a session that she did on coupon interest. So please buy it, it's 500 kwacha. Contact her, she'll give you all the details. So there is no point in you, if everyone now starts shouting scenarios, what if you've got 200,000 kwacha? You're simply going to add that. It will tell you how much you're going to get in interest for two years, and by the way, these would differ. So you see, for a two-year bond, you get 18,000 in coupon interest. And for a three-year bond, you get 21,000. However, the progression of how these keep growing are only dependent on um, the bid price. Because by the time these mature, there'll probably be a different bid price. And the good thing with this worksheet is you can edit it to match those settings as they progress. Uh, I'll pause. Now, um, do a bit of stock taking. So far, so good. How are we doing? How are we doing? So Chanoza is answering questions regarding the, the worksheet. Yes, Harrison, let me just enable. Yes, you can unmute your mic, Harrison. OK, uh, thank you, Victoria. Um, I was just looking at the. Like if you look, for example, at the two-year bond, mm. yes, um, what I was wondering is like, say if you start with a principal of 200,000, then it shows you that after two years, you get a future value of 242,000. But then the rest of the numbers, which is going to like up to 14 years, I'm wondering what's, what's that about? Oh, so uh, what I was saying is if uh, this uh, worksheet came out as a result of uh, compounding um, your investments as they happen. So the idea is this scenario shows you what happens if you don't spend your coupons 
and your discount interest at the end and reinvest everything back, including your principal. So this says you'd have kept the 18,500, the next 18,500, and the future value that has been calculated, depending on these bid prices, because these change, you are going to have a future value of this. And when you reinvest everything back, and so what, so 79 is what you gain, and you add it to 200 and you put everything back, this is how your investment will progress. So look, oh wow, with, two, with 200,000, you get 1 million by one year for doing nothing and reinvesting everything back. I think that's a pretty good deal. And obviously you'd probably know what your financial numbers are, how much you need to retire and then so on and so forth. So these worksheets are especially useful if you're not going to spend the money, but not everyone is trying to achieve um, FIRE, which is financial, in, what is it? Financial independence, retire early. Let's say you need this as a savings or I mean an investment vehicle for your children's education. What would that look like? Or you are saving to start building a house or you are saving to buy a car or whatever financial goals you have, you're going on vacations or you want to go on a sabbatical or you just don't want to do nothing for a year and you want to ensure that you have some money coming in and you just want to take leave. You, have, you are the creator of your life, so you should decide how you're going to structure this. Now, the last part of, uh, this is basically the ends of the slide, so I think we've been asking questions as we go, is I also wanted to highlight what um, an investment um, strategy might look like with bonds. So I'll use um, the 100,000 example, and using the current amount of 100,000, and I'm assuming I still want to get that 165,000 face value bond, this is how I would progress. Now, you are going to notice that I have listed out different months with a principal amount. So if you by any chance happen to fall on a 100, how much is this? 130,000 kwacha every month from January to June, you can simply space them out in such a way that you are going to receive coupons every single year. I mean, every single month for the next three years, according to this bond. So I've said 130,000 is your principal amount. I'm just rounding off. And we know coupons are paid out every six months. So if you, you take your bid in January, your first coupon will mature in July, which is 7,000, 12 quarter. And I used this worksheet to come up with the numbers. Eh? Then the next coupon will mature in uh, January, the following year. So now if you look at this, we have a pattern coming out. And this is personally what I intend to do. Now, unfortunately, I do not have 130,000 kwacha. So if people are in the chat and have money, please send so that I can buy shares and buy more bonds. Then in the next month, again, you have another 130,000. Your first coupon will mature in August and then the next one in Feb. Then in March, again, you find 130,000. Then you have 7,000 in September, or the September and March. And you keep repeating this six times. And we know that bonds mature two times. So if we multiply six times two, that's 12 monthly payments. And for some people, 7,000 is all that they need, bare minimum, to at least survive, to cover their basic necessities. So this could be an example of a bond strategy. If you want, you can space it out every four months for your kids. There are so many scenarios. And we are not doing creating uh, strategies, but this is just an example of what the possibilities are. So um, as far as what I had prepared for today's session, that is basically it. You can find me on my Instagram. So for those of you that follow me on Instagram, you know that I'm sharing uh, my my journey to financial independence, whether it is through budget savings, my net worth updates, and all those other mini savings that I do. And I share the same page on uh, my Facebook. On Twitter, I use that as a social forum. And I'm also planning to upload this video on YouTube for those that want to refer to it back. So it's being recorded and you can have access to it then. Um, but from my end, 
I would like to thank every one of you that uh, stuck around, took time to spend your morning with me. And I am lucky, or I'm happy that I have managed to finish in record time of, did I say 11 hours? Oops, nope, then I'm very late. I thought I said 11.30. Sorry, we went a little bit over time. Um, I will invite um, everyone who has questions to ask questions if there's something that I've missed. Um, but thank you very much. If there are any questions or comments, please. Uh, are you going to share the PowerPoint presentation? uh i hadn't <laughs> planned on sharing it but i can make it available on my website as well or on facebook okay okay thank you victoria this has been really helpful well, thank you natalie yes zondo huge thanks Vicky. yeah follow up questions I will just get to but for now uh will there be one for treasury bills as well if you notice from my I think when I started I I initially thought government bonds and treasury bills were one oh um so treasury bills um we can have one uh but um, I kid you not if you can understand government bonds Treasury bills is the, the easiest. Basically, you are going to look at the discount prices. But yes, if you want another one, um, we can schedule another one. Maybe late next month, not next week, but sometime so, in the future. The way I see it, like, uh, maybe, maybe it's just uh, treasury bills can be used as a generator, like, for... Topping, you remember when you mentioned topping up, there's no topping up with bonds, but you get coupons, yeah. eh? Yes, yes. So imagine you get that coupon six months and you put it in a treasury bill that yes. comes in a few months yeah. later, then you put that money back into a bond, get a yes. bond. Yes, yes, So yes. yeah, I would want to know both so that I can start this process. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, so my Instagram is victoria.chama. So let me just share this again. Yes, victoria.chama on Instagram as well. Uh, yes, Gerland, you, you have your mic unmuted. Victoria. So uh, now for those people who want to do follow-ups, I do private paid sessions. Please come with money when you're coming in my inbox. Ne? I also need money to buy more shares. So come with money for consultations. All right. Um, I, I think yeah. that is pretty much it. So if we have no questions, I will close the session. If there is no other follow-up questions. Thank you so much. It was very insightful. All right. No, you are welcome, Karen. My pleasure. Oh, what is the consultation fee? It's 500 kwacha per hour. Thanks, right. Victoria. This was great. Thank you, <coughs> Mommy, Thank look you. at that. I'm doing it. All right, everybody, enjoy your weekends. Please go ahead and research and validate all of this information. Ask Stop. these relational managers, try to contact as many people, but try to find the contact Take in Bank of Zambia. And yeah, so we'll meet on the socials. My preferred social for those that are wondering uh, Instagram. So you are mostly active on Instagram. So that's where you find me. All right.
everybody i will end the session have a wonderful weekend and enjoy the rest of november and please remember by the way disclaimer for those Mommy, that are look at me. we are getting paid next uh, i mean look at me please budget please create your budget all right bye bye Chama. oh Chama, yes sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so I've I've seen uh, 24th December, I've seen 2nd December, and uh, yeah, so there's still some auction days in December. Uh, so December for bonds is just one, then treasury bills, yes. There okay, so for bonds, it's when? The 24th December. And then uh, how long does it take to open the account for you to do everything, the bidding and all? Uh, it should take you less than a week, unless there's someone just not doing the transferring of papers, but a week is more than enough, or even less, especially if you know someone at Bank of Zambia, or you go there yourself. It yeah, doesn't take look. long. Okay, so if I, yeah. I open a bank account, let's yeah. say with that Atlas Mara right now, mm -hmm. and then I open that um, uh, C -S CSD? Yes. And then it's just a matter of the bank making a follow-up for me after I make the payment to the bank. Uh, so for the CSD account, they'll do it on uh, your behalf. And then Bank of Zambia will write an email to you because you're going to add mm -hmm. your email address in that form. Mm -hmm. So that's how they'll mm -hmm. give feedback. Or they'll mm -hmm. give feedback to the bank so you can ask the bank as well. Okay. Oh, this is a big cotton. And then you can put any amount, maybe starting from a thousand. Yes, point. only a thousand, but the bid price would determine how much you're actually going to get oh, worth in terms of face value. Okay. Yes. If I don't know how to make those calculations that we're making, can I still go ahead and bid? Just tell them to say I want yes. this, and then the bank does the calculations right. for me um yes but also get i would also advise that you buy chanosia's worksheet because Chama. you should have a plan for what you are going to use that money for so with anything especially with final uh personal finance you need to have a reason why you are doing what you are doing so i wouldn't say go blindly and just tell them but uh -huh. even though you're going blindly and saying i want one thousand at least have a purpose what you're going to use that money for especially when you're receiving the coupons and the final discount because what happened to me was when the first coupon came it was christmas in april and i blew it all i blew it all in the blink of an eye so when i say i blew it for me that went to savings but still i didn't know that i could use i knew i could use the power of compounding but i didn't actually visualize it and see it for myself so you should have a reason why you're doing what you're doing anyway i hope it was a one-on-one -on -one session but thank you very much it was oh, bring 500 bring 500 you can talk <laughs> all right so please okay, i would also you. like uh no you're welcome please give feedback on what any of those social media you? platforms where you are whether it's twitter facebook or instagram i would love to know your feedback so that when i'm doing the treasury bills one i can make changes if i need to but i think we've been saying bye for the last 10 minutes oh okay we have elijah now yes elijah please go ahead and ask. Hi, how are you <laughs> thank you so you mentioned Chanozia's worksheet. Where can I get that? Uh, you can find it or find the details on her Facebook page and also follow her on Instagram. She's Miss, I think, Miss underscore Kavai. Let me, let me, let me, let me. Okay, let me just copy and paste uh, the information on the PowerPoint so that everybody can see. All right, Chanozia. Awesome. And then share it. Then for those that are going to take screenshots, you can quickly do so. So this is where you can find her, Miss underscore Kavai on IG, or you can send an email to Miss Kavai at gmail.com. Or even on Facebook, she answers. All right, thank you. All right, great. All right, uh, people, 
let us eat breakfast for those that are eating breakfast. Some of us haven't eaten and enjoy your weekend.